Hello friends and book babes. Welcome back to the channel and today is the first day of book miss. Now if you don't know what book miss is, frankly neither do I. But from what I gathered I believe the concept is 12 days of Christmas type of thing and so 12 days of books. Booktubers will do uh, 12 days of videos. For today's video, the first video for Bookmas, I decided to rank popular book tropes. Okay, hopefully I am screen recording. <laughs> Never done this before, but let's first talk about my rankings. At the top, we're gonna stop at start at top to bottom. So for my like top tier, I have I'm the one, I'm the only one for my Beyonce stands. <laughs> and then after that, I have she eats because she does. Okay. And then in the middle, I have I don't know her, you know. And that one is more so like, like, was she good? Maybe. Do I remember? Not really. So <laughs> it is what it is, you know. And then second to the bottom, I have straight to jail. Straight to jail. Okay. And then for my final, I have burn it put it in hell where it belongs pretty much so yeah <laughs> so let's just get into this tier ranking of bookish tropes let's go ahead and start with one bed so i'm gonna be honest i know the girlies go feral for one bed but i've never really cared about one bed i feel like as an adult if you can't just sleep next to someone you have issues to be honest so i'm gonna put her in i don't know her um, just cause it can be good, I guess, but I don't know her. I don't want to know her really, <laughs> frankly. Then let's go ahead and do slow burn. I'm going to say, I don't know her either. Um, I'm going to say, I don't know her even more than one bed because to be honest, if I have to read a romance book, that's more than 400 pages. I'm already low key tapping out, you know, let alone a slow burn, a slow burn where it's like 500 pages and they barely like touch hands in page like 250 or whatever, 300, whatever. Like, I just don't have the patience for it. You know, like when it's when I'm reading a romance, I just want a quick little fluffy. Let me kick and giggle my feet. For a, what? <laughs> <laughs> let me giggle and kick my feet around type of thing real quick i don't really like that's just too much work <laughs> in my opinion so yeah we don't know her um then let's do bad boy nerdy girl i actually i actually really do kind of enjoy this trope so we're going to put her in she eats I, granted have i read something like that since my wattpad days no <laughs> so it could be terrible now i don't really know but i remember back in the day i would eat that up and vice versa when it was like the bad girl and the nerdy guy i especially like those too i don't know it's kind of it's giving opposites attract it's giving we learn from each other because we're so different and we end up bettering each other because like we find the balance of our stuff you know so I actually really enjoy it. Mafia romance. Now she eats more, more so than bad boy, nerdy girl. Honestly, I haven't really read many mafia romances, but I like the idea of it. <laughs> Pretty much is what it is. Let's be for real. Okay. I hate everyone but you. I'm actually going to low key. I don't know her. Because honestly, so it depends on how it's done. Because most of the time when it's a I hate everyone but you, they're usually like very rude to everyone but her. And I don't like that. Like you need to at least be a functioning human that understands how to treat others, even if you don't necessarily like them. Like you don't have to be a people person. Like I'm not really a people person like that, but I still know how to be polite, you know? And if you're a grown man and you don't know how to like be polite or like have just a normal conversation with someone without being a dick, then I don't want to know you. I don't care if you're nice to me. Get out of my face, actually. So that 
that's maybe that's a hot take. I don't know. <laughs> but teacher, student, we're going to – well, the appropriate would probably be, like, literally straight to jail, you know, but we're going to put it in – burn it because – actually, no, we will put it in straight to jail just because I think a teacher – student thing could work if it's in a college setting and the teach and the like student is in her like last year or whatever um or they're not in classes together at all like he's not the professor of anything she teaches then I think it could work um but they have to at least be in college like they cannot they cannot it cannot it cannot not be college, you know, a doc, like freaking your doctorate program or something like that. Like it has to be like that or something for me to get behind it. So we're going to put it in straight to jail because if it's not that, then they should go straight to jail. So yeah. <laughs> and then we have childhood friends to lovers. I'm going to put she eats and we're going to put her actually over the mafia romances. I think Childhood friends to lovers, it really hits. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put it in I'm the one, I'm the only one. Because it just, it hits so much more than friends to lovers. And since I'm talking about friends to lovers, where is it? Let me find it. Here it is. We're going to put friends to lovers and she eats childhood friends to lovers and I'm the one, I'm the only one because I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know how to verbally ar articulate like why it's better for them to be childhood friends to lovers compared to friends to lovers, but it just, it just hits better. Cause I just love seeing the like little flashbacks of them as kids and being like cute or whatever and adorable, or even if they hated each other in, in childhood, like that's fine too. <laughs> but I don't know. Childhood friends to lovers, it just hits even more than friends to lovers to me. Since we're talking about that, enemies to lovers also we're going to put her above childhood friends to lovers because it just hits different. You know, I saw a TikTok once where someone was like, if enemies to lovers is your favorite trope, it's because you uh, like the idea of being able to show the worst parts of you and someone still loving you. And I think that checks out, you know, and I think that concept is just beautiful, you know, <laughs> like when they're enemies to lovers, that means they're not putting up a front, you know, it's not like the first date, like, let me show the best version of myself. Like if they hate each other, they're not going to like hold up a front at all. And these people still fell in love with each other, you know? And so it's like, you know, that they're in it, they're in it for life, you know? <laughs> And I think that's also why I like childhood friends to lovers, because if you knew each other as children, then you totally have had to see like every like the good, the bad and the ugly <laughs> of said person. And you still chose to love them. Yes. <laughs> OK. Bully romance. Burn it. Burn it. Get it out of my face. No exceptions. Step siblings. Also burn it. Probably more than, yes, more, I think. More than bully. Step siblings. All I think about is ugly love and it triggers me. So, yeah. <laughs> We're just going to move on from that. Um, grumpy Sunshine. She eats. Now, hmm, she eats more than Mafia for me. Um, hmm. See, Grumpy Sunshine could be a friends to lovers thing too. Like you can put Grumpy Sunshine in any of these categories. Like that's more so a personality thing. So I'm just going to leave it right there. But Grumpy Sunshine, especially if it's the girl that's grumpy, I eat that up every time. It's golden Retriever Boy. I love a Golden Retriever Boy. I just do. And then a lot of times with the man when they're grumpy, the authors just write them as like rude people. Like the whole – um. I hate everybody but you thing. It's kind of similar in that sense. So I just always usually prefer when the girl is grumpy. But it eats either way. <laughs> okay. Best friend's brother. Best friend's brother. Okay, we're going to put her in she eats. 
it after grumpy sunshine um i love a best friend's brother i think the like almost forbiddenness of it and like the angst of it like really hits but it's not my number one because i think brother's best friend is better and uh yeah we're gonna leave it like that i think brother's best friend is better just because I'm an only child and I wish I had a brother, <laughs> to be honest. And then I want his friend to fall in love with me, obviously, because I'm just so great. <laughs> you know, so that's pretty much all it really is. Force proximity. Force proximity, honestly, I don't have really any hard feelings towards it. So I'm going to put it in, I don't know her, but towards the end of it, because I don't really care. <laughs> I think forced proximity has to be a thing in enemies to lovers because like if they're enemies then why are they hanging out you know like they have to kind of be forced into it so it's necessary in enemies to lovers which is my favorite one of my favorites but like I'm not seeking out a book that just says forced proximity you know so yeah Friends with benefits, she also eats. She eats hard, I'm going to say. I think we're going to put her right after best friend's brother. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. I just love the like aspect of them kind of in a sense, almost like fake dating, which since we're talking about fake dating, fake dating is also probably my favorite actually like more than enemies to lovers if i'm being honest and i just love the idea of like you guys having this thing that y'all both need to do and y'all will both benefit from it involves some form of intimacy that you wouldn't do without this deal or whatever and because of it and like having to be around them so much you guys start to fall in love you know and so that's kind of the same concept with friends to friends with benefits um so i do enjoy it a lot but fake dating just hits every time i know it's cliche i know it's done all the time but i eat it up every single time okay i don't care i will read it multiple times different font i don't care i love it i love it to no end okay and i guess that gives forced proximity too but i don't know i feel like forced proximity is more so a plot device not necessarily a true trope if that makes sense which is why i'm like i don't know her but far of the i don't know her but anyways, workplace romance. She eats, okay? Workplace romance is was actually like my favorite thing to read it on my like Wattpad era. So we're going to put her right in between Friends to Lovers and Grumpy Sunshine. I just really love a workplace romance. I don't know what it is or why. I have I can't tell you why. I just do. Billionaire. I'm the one. I'm the only one. We're going to put her in front of brother's best friend because I need a rich man in my life to spoil me. Uh, the The combo is a billionaire workplace romance. Like when they're the CEO and she's like the secretary or something and then they have to fake date. See, that is my, that, that's, that is it for me right there that right there that i will read that book multiple times different fonts i don't care give me that triple combo right now right person not enough time burn it burn it i can't believe you would do that to me i can't i can't i i don't have the emotional capacity the strength to deal with that trope truly I just can't. I can't. Either y'all are immortal or in my head, y'all both die in your sleep at the same time, like the same night. <laughs> like that's it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. I will not. I true I will not. Age gap. We're gonna put her in straight to jail. Straight to jail only because it can be done 
well. Like right now I'm reading um, The Brightest Light of Sunshine or something like that. And she's 22 and he's 30, um, which isn't too bad. I've been eating up the book a lot. Um, but also at the same time, like I'm 24 and I can't imagine dating like a 30 year old. But I don't know. So it's not for me. Like I don't think I'm built for age gap in my actual life but this book i'm eating up so it could be done well i just hate whenever they're like 18 and he's like 40 or like she's 20 and he's like 35 but he also saw her one time when she was 15 and hasn't stopped thinking about her since like you cannot you cannot have met her you could not have even seen her crossing the street before the age of like 19 and then maybe I can get down with it, you know, and she has to at least be like 21 um, or the whoever's the young person, you know, they have to at least be 21 and up, you know. So that's why I'm saying straight to jail. But I it can, it can be done in a well way, I guess. I think I'm just putting the straight to the, the tropes that where you could actually go to jail. I think I'm putting that in straight to jail. So, and then we have sports romance. So sports romance, I've actually been really eating it up as of recently. And I'm actually going to, as of recently, yeah, yeah, it's doing it for me. And then I have knife to throat. It's going to do it for me every time. It's going to do it for me. Like, it just will. Granted, have I read much with that? No. No. But it's going to do it for me because it better be enemies to lovers and it better be a fantasy book, obviously. But yeah, like it's just going to do it for me. Insta love. Burn that ish. Burn that ish. I feel like it's just lazy writing, really. It's lazy writing. It's not genuine. It You can't convince me. Like just so much wrong with it. <laughs> Unrequited love. I'm going to put in straight to jail, but like the farther of it. Um, and that's because it can be done well. I personally just have not read one where it's done well yet. Unless it's like a friends to lovers thing, then sometimes I can. But what I mean by it being done well really is I can't deal with it being an unrequired unrequited love and the person has like a glow up and all of a sudden they're like oh my gosh actually or if the person starts get if someone starts being interested in the person and so now they're like "Ooh, wait a minute jealous I'm jealous you know I don't mm -mm, I can't do that you know I just need them to like hang out a lot or something and like he just sees her differently all of a sudden and is like how have I not like seen like this before like how have you been right in front of me all this time and you, you know like stuff like that like I need that for it to work and I just haven't read that so straight to jail but until I read that then maybe we'll put her in I don't know her so <laughs> Mary <sighs> marriage of convenience okay Okay, look, I know I said fake dating was my favorite, but I forgot I put marriage of convenience on here. <laughs> and that is because marriage of convenience is fake dating, but the stakes are higher. And that's pretty much all it is. And then like when they finally are like something happens and they're like, where's my wife? It eats every time. It eats every time, especially if you do. Ooh, if you do the marriage of convenience Enemies to lovers, the billionaire. It's over. Workplace romance, possibly, but like CEO, he's the CEO, so he's like a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love it. I love it. It's like, oh, I love it. Okay. Anyways, pregnancy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Listen, I know some of y'all are going to be like, what do you mean? Straight to jail. Why aren't you putting it in burn it? And the reason I'm not putting it in burn it, hear me out, okay, is because if done well, 
I will eat it up. And by it done well, I mean she better not be a teenager. She better have always wanted kids. <laughs> um, she better not hide the fact that she's having his kid and doesn't tell him till she's the kid's like eight or something. <laughs> and he only finds out because he sees the kid randomly one day. Um, hate that. The pregnancy trope, the reason it's okay with me, if it's done right with all those requirements, <laughs> is because with the pregnancy trope, you are getting your friends to lovers. You're getting the single parent. You are getting the forced proximity. And you are getting a tending to their wounds, in a sense, taking care of them when they're sick. You get to see the guy do that when she's like having morning sickness and stuff like that. Like that, there's so many great moments available for the pregnancy trope. And so if it's done well, I'm into it. I am into it. And so there's my case. There's my case for it. You can hate me all you want for it. But with those requirements, it could be, it could be great. It could be great, okay? Single parent, we're gonna put her and she's the one. She's the only one. We're gonna put her right. Mm. Mm. Yes, we're gonna put her there. Okay, I think I prefer single mom more than single dad. I know everyone loves single dad, but I just think about the fact that like, so I, I'm a self-inserter into the story. So like, I just think about how I would have to be a stepmom and I just doesn't really like nah you know I'd rather have the guy that I'm not the stepdad I'm the dad that stepped up <laughs> I'd rather have that energy than like stepmom love triangle okay we're gonna put her in straight to jail right in between teacher student and pregnancy and that is because the love triangle can can be okay if they end up with who I want them with. And that's that. Okay, second chance. Second chance romance. I'm going to put her in I don't know her. And the reason and I'm going to put her um in front of forced proximity. And the reason we don't know her is because it really just depends on like why they need a second chance. You know, why they need a second chance. What did they do? Um so it depends on that, and then I could probably get on board. Second chance romance with a friends to lovers is where it really hits for me. Last but not least, cheating. Cheating! Oh my god, okay. I'm gonna put her, obviously, and burn it. Where should we put her? Because we have step-siblings in here. I can't freaking... <laughs> I can't have cheating be number one and then freaking step-siblings be number two. <laughs> oh my god. Um... We're actually going, yeah, we're actually going to put her here in between right person, not enough time and cheat and oop, not there and bully romance. That's where we're going to put her. And actually, I forgot to put one that I just thought of that I actually hate more than cheating. Hear me out. Okay. A lot of people, a lot of writers nowadays know that we hate the cheating trope. And so they're not going to use it a lot of times with the couple that's supposed to be endgame. Okay. They'll do it for like the ex that no one is supposed to root for anyways, a lot of times. So I don't read very many books where the endgame couple also cheated, <laughs> you know? And so since I'm not exposed to that very often, the rage of that is not there as much compared to the miscommunication trope. I loathe a miscommunication trope. I would honestly probably put that in front of step siblings. <laughs> I might, I might actually, Ugh, at least in front of right person, not enough time. Like I hate the miscommunication trope so much that I'd rather read a book of <laughs> their loved one dying. Like, and I hate it so much, I think, because so many books use it because they don't know how to make a third act conflict if it's not involving miscommunication. So they just utilize it so much for no freaking reason. 
So that's all I had to say about that. But <laughs> here is my tier ranking. Pretend uh, miscommunication trope is right here. <laughs> but yeah, tell me you guys' tier rankings for these tropes and what other videos you want to see for me during Book Miss. But thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Follow me on my socials. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.